What's going on, smart people? Today, I want to talk a little bit about how I got good at math. Good, of course, is in quotations because, you know, it's relative. To a mathematician, I'm a sloppy child, but to most other people, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty capable, but I wasn't always. Uh, aside from AP statistics, in high school, the highest math that I took was algebra. And when I took my math placement test for college, the math I tested into was algebra. I didn't take my first calculus course until my third semester of college. So how did I go from dividing by zero to Robert De Niro? Find out after the break. Let's do it. I want you to get excited about your life. Welcome back. Whenever someone asks, how do you get good at something? The generic answer is always, do, do that thing more. If you want to be a better piano player, play piano more. If you want to be a better writer, write more. The same goes for math, but you already know that. But I also don't think that's the entire answer. It's not like if you want to get good at math, you should just solve every single math problem you see. That just is, that's crazy. Now, I'm just gonna cut straight to what worked for me. No anecdotes or BS. Something that really helped enhance my math skills is constant exposure, go figure, coupled with necessity. I mean, do anything for four years and tell me that you don't get a little good at it. Four years, I'm talking about undergrad. Now do something for four years every single day with the whole fact of I have to get good at this over your head and tell me you don't get even better at it. But this part of the video is not for the college students that watch my videos. You're already close to the fire. You already know that you have to do all right in your classes to get to the next class, or you have to do well in your classes to get into grad school, and you're also paying for your classes, or your parents are, so you need to get your money's worth, so you already get this. But I'm talking to the high school students that watch my videos, and I'm saying, if you're trying to pick up math or get farther in math as a hobby, and you find it really challenging and you wanna know how to get better, I'm saying that it's easier when you have to get better. So I mentioned necessity, but I also mentioned constant exposure, which is a little bit ambiguous because yes, that does mean constant problem solving, but that doesn't mean solve every single problem at the end of the chapter. I mean, if you're running into problems where you see something like, Problem one is integrate x squared dx, and problem two is integrate x cubed dx. These are the same problem. So part of getting good at math for me was learning how to identify different types of problems. That way I can limit how many of the same type of problem I end up answering. Because if you're doing that kind of thing, where you're doing it for x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth, and so on, you'd start to pat yourself on the back and feel good about yourself, but that's because you already know how to solve the problem, that at a certain point you're just wasting your time and you should move on. I really think that this is important because, sure, in, in high school it's pretty common to get a homework set where you have 30 problems on there, but as you go further in your education, especially in physics, the homework sets get shorter and shorter and shorter, and your professor has the assumption that if you can solve the n equals 2 case, you can solve the arbitrary n case, so solve the arbitrary n case instead. So part of getting good at math is learning to think more general and identifying what's the pattern here? Do I really need to solve all of these to get the idea? Now, moving on from that, when it comes to a difficult concept for you, something that you've been reading and you've been studying, but it just doesn't make sense to you, you've read the section in the book a million times and it just hasn't clicked, read it from somewhere else. Whenever I don't understand something, I like to hear it explained from as many sources as possible. I mean, I have four different textbooks on quantum mechanics just because there are concepts in there where I just don't understand it in Griffiths, but I do understand it in Shankar because of the way that they phrased things. I don't, so variety is your best friend too. But now, the thing that played the most integral role in me getting good at math, without a doubt, no doubt, was putting myself in the position to where I had to explain it well to someone else. And I know you've probably heard that a million times, that the best way to learn is to explain. That's it's probably because it's a really good thing to do. But in order to keep that last answer from being the most cliche answer of all time as to how to get good at math, let me elaborate on it just a little bit. You see, when you want to understand something, you'll have a certain amount of questions that you ask that you have to answer, and then once you've answered all of your own questions, you'll convince yourself that you understand it. But someone else might have completely different questions about the exact same thing. So if you're trying to explain something to them, and they hit you with a question that you wouldn't have even thought of, it just pushes what you know even further. That's what it means to go even further beyond. You just went Super Saiyan 3. So in summary, I got good at math by 
needing to be by forcing myself to think more generally so that I can see what problems I should really be solving, looking for variety and explanation, so pulling from multiple sources in order to learn and explaining things to other people, which I still do to this day via Skype tutoring, link in description for more information. But there are a lot of smart people that watch these videos, so in the comments section, let everyone know how you got good at math because we live in a society. See you tomorrow. I want you to get excited about your life.